Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, that's called us here today, Lord, to continue to teach us, train us, and prepare us for your return. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and hand him the, uh, hand him, what's his name? Jeremy, the uh, homework, yes? No, no, no. That's, uh, we can do that later. All right, everybody. You got it, Jeremy? Yeah. All right. So I got a question for you. Why did Jesus put Satan's name in the Bible first before his? Pardon? Say that again. Satan is? Whose whose phone's going off the hook or whatever it is, turn it off or lower it, turn the thing off, or have it grow wings and throw it out the window. Okay, don't guess. No, he's not gonna say anything. <laughs> okay. All right, kid, let's start, yes? Let's go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Amen. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay. Well, I was telling the people yesterday. So visualize a string in the spirit from Genesis to Revelation, okay? You have that visualization? Okay. So visualize... Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, through the Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, I think that's where it is, right? That they would have, actually, just go ahead and look that up. Revelation 12, 17, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Yeah which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Last week, last week I gave about five scriptures, right? Maybe six on... Jesus revealing himself in the Old Testament, correct? <clears throat> so why would the Lord allow Satan's name before his own? 
By the way, the people that didn't do their homework, I want you, when you are in ministry, when you are, have authority, and you give somebody instructions to do something, okay, remember tonight's mercy and grace I'm having upon you. You have the same mercy and grace upon them. Do you understand? Jeez, I didn't think it was big as such a thing. Last week, 30 people missed. The 40 people missed. This week, 30 people missed. Jeez. Louise. It wasn't because of me. Jeremy was going to be here. So, oh, no, not Jeremy. All right, let's go. So let's go to First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1. First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1. Have you ever heard of the term exegesis? Hermeneutics? Your mama? <laughs> I wanted to see if you were actually paying attention. Sometimes the best way to... No, but this way. You have to be a detective, okay, to seek out the Word of God. Some of you, you're old enough, remember Peter Falk and Columbo, Macmillan and wife? What was the, what's his name? Harry, that's Perry Mason. No, Harry... Yeah, a, a David, a David, what's his name? Not Carradine. What's his name? Play, yeah, in Ch David, uh, what's his name? No, no, I just said no. No, not David Carradine. David, the, uh, shoot, what was it? It was a TV program in the 70s, 60s and 70s. Something, Harry, something. Anyways, a detective, right? You have to be a detective. What was that? What'd you say? No, that's, uh, that's uh, with uh, Chuck uh, T Touch Connors. But Mannix is a good one, too. They had a lot of uh, ones back then. Did you know he played uh, basketball for UCLA? Yeah, he used to play basketball for UCLA. Anyways, you have to be a detective. Okay? So why did the Lord, in Genesis 3.15, put enmity between a what? A serpent, right? Was it a serpent or Satan? But it was a serpent because you didn't know it was Satan yet, did you? No. no. So in First Chronicles twenty, oh, I should. Where are we at? Oh, okay. I should look it up myself. First Chronicles. And originally, you probably know this, but I'll just throw it in there just in case, maybe not. Uh, Samuel, Chronicles, Kings, they were one book. They broke them up later on. You know, one, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, First Kings, Second Kings, First Samuel, Second Samuel. They, used, they were one book. And uh, Ezra and Nehemiah were one book also. But just for, for your information. Okay, this is the first time you will see Satan's name. First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. What's important about that? He provoked. Provoked. How many of you get provoked? Uh, when did we give out, uh, where's Yolanda? When did we have that thing at uh, the steak place? What day was that? When we gave these people... Certificates and stuff. What day? June 18th. June 18th. Okay. We, we gave like, I don't know how many people. All kinds of certificates, right? Evangelist, pastor, bing, pom, boom. Right? Was that? A couple people, yeah. So here's the thing. The Lord is going to test you. Okay, not the devil, the Lord. Unless you have an open door, right? The Lord will test you. Okay, the Lord wants to test your faith. 
He wants to test your strength. We know that through the book of Job. And why am I sitting down? <laughs> I feel like, what's his name? Doing the interview, that guy uh, that interviewed Nixon back in the 60s or 70s. How was that? David Frost, exactly. He would sit down. I felt like that. Well, that was weird. Very comfortable. Anyways, what was I saying? Yes, exactly. Okay? Yes. You're not just going to walk in. Guess what? Devil. I'm a pastor now. What did he tell Job? What did the Satan tell jo the Lord about Job? Let me at him. Where are you coming from? To and fro. Did you know Satan had a fro? He said, where are you coming from? To and fro. It says it in the King James. Anyways. He goes, let me at him. Okay, but don't touch him. So you don't think he did the same thing to you guys? Yes. I didn't know the first thing that was going to knock you wobbly on the ropes. Did you ever see Raging Bull? You never knock me down, Ray. You never knock me down. Anybody ever see Raging Bull? Okay, how come nobody's saying yes? You're right. You never knock me down, Ray. What Ray am I talking about? You never saw it. Sugar Ray Robinson. Jesus. Anyways, his claim to fame that it was Sugar Ray Robinson never knocked him down. They fought six times, Jake LaMotta. Anyways, he never knocked him down. So the devil, yes, it's in the Bible, 1 Chronicles 27, 2. So here's the thing. Okay? The, the devil is going, God, let me have a chance at that person that was there at, the, what's the name of the steak place? Steven's Steven Steakhouse. They were texting, they were proud, they were emailing, they were this, they were doing selfies. Look at <laughs> With their certificate. Devil's going, all right, we'll see how bad you really are. Devil says, go for it. I mean, the Lord says, go for it. Go for them. I'm going to use this Pastor Mike against them. Do homework. Oh, I never see anybody again. Homework. <laughs> I know, huh? Uh, and the ones that did do the homework, I hope you cried. Because there's something when you realize that your life is finite. Now, none of you think you're going to live forever. You just don't think you're going to die. Do you? Yeah. You know, when I did mine the first time, well, I was in charge, actually. And uh, that's what convinced me to get, uh, no, not insurance. <laughs> <laughs> the one other than when you're buried. What's it called? Cremated. cremated. Yes, that's the one that convinced me to get cremated. Because uh, I couldn't allow my daughter to see me dead in a coffin. It would break her heart to see me dead. Yes, up there in the thing, bada bing, bada boom, he's dead, ba ba ba, but not seeing me physically. I don't know if she's going to buy that, but I told her this year, I told her this summertime, I said, you know, I'm going to get cremated. She sort of just like didn't want to deal with that. But that's why, because I don't really care about anybody else. But I, <laughs> I mean, you know, really. I, I've known her longer than any of you, right? Yeah. You know, I don't want her to remember me lifeless body. Okay? So anyways, I hope you all had a moment while you were doing it that I'm going to die. You know, I got them, whatever ones you handed in, but they're not for me, they're for you. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. This is the one time I'm allowing you to be self. This is your agreement with the Lord. This is what I'm going to do for you, Lord. 
I think I told somebody you I bought I found like three or four of them recently. That's what said. Oh, I should tell these new people. Probably won't like it, but what the heck? What are you gonna do? And uh, the sad part is, out of those four, they were in ministry. Uh, three of them are dead, physically dead. They walked away from the Lord. And I remember when they started dying, I said, God ain't no joke. He showed me Ezekiel 33, that I read every festival. I'm the watchman. I'm going to teach you. If you don't do what the Lord says, and I'm telling you what, what's what, then your blood is on your hands. Literally. You know, and... Uh, I know they use that word a lot now, but literally it was. Amen? So, in, in what happens? What does he do? He provoked, Satan provoked David. Satan, the Lord is going to allow Satan to provoke you. Come here, Jeremy. Come here, Jeremy. Turn around. <laughs> Punk? I think you can sing, huh? <laughs> yeah. 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 Provoking you, provoking you, provoking you. Oh, you're an intercessor now, huh? You're probably... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the devil provoking you. Because what did David do prior to First Chronicles twenty-one one? They didn't have to number the troops. They went out in faith. They were just that would the Lord would magnify the footsteps of the army, and the enemy would say, Jesus. The, the ground would shake. They wouldn't even have to fight him. But David's, but the devil's going, you don't have enough men to fight this battle. You don't have enough men to fight this battle. Take it to you guys. Do you have enough faith? Are you in the right place? Then you start taking on the flesh. You stop walking in faith. And then the Lord, then the devil say, provoked you to what? To get into the soul. Provoked you to respond. I'm sorry. <laughs> provoked you to react instead of respond. Provoked you. Come here, punk. Provoked you to react instead of use wisdom in your response. Do you understand? Okay, thank you. Okay. Now the devil, only because the Lord allows it, okay, I'm going to pretend and assume that you don't have any open doors. So if that's the case, the Lord is allowing it. Do you agree? He will never give you anything more than you can bear, correct? Yes. So if that's the case, shut up and take it. I've said this before, right? Never waste a good time to shut up. A yeah. <laughs> couple weeks ago, I think it was a couple weeks ago, I was looking at my arms and I'm going like, I'm all cleared up. You know, and about a month ago, I might have told you, I was, I was from here even, and it was up here all the way to my ankles in psoriasis. It wasn't a rash. I looked at it. It was psoriasis. It was ugly. It felt even worse. It felt like I had ants in my skin or spiders inside of my skin. And I was like, God, take this away. No, your grace is sufficient. God, take this away. No, your grace is sufficient. And I'd be there all night just ripping the skin off my chest and my arms and everything. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> 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 
Hey. Now let me tell you something. A lot of people have told me, go to the doctors, go to the hospital, go this. Oh, I thought about it. But I said no, because I knew it was spiritual. I knew it was a testing. I knew it was a spiritual testing. And then guess what? Boom, it's gone. Heck, yeah, yes, praise God. So be not ignorant of Satan's devices. Now, if you don't have an open door, thank the Lord for your testing. Are you going to thank him for your testing? Are you going to thank him when your wife says, you ain't nothing, Jack? Pastor Priscilla gets mad when I say Jack. You ain't nothing, John. <laughs> you know? Or when your husband or boyfriend or son tell the females, oh, you think you're so special because you go to church and you pray in tongues and you're this and that. And you have a title now. And you're doing everything for your children because you don't want them to go to hell. <laughs> what do you do? Swallow it. Swallow it. That's the only way you're going to pass the test. I'm telling you. That's the only way you're going to pass the test. Why? Because you're provoking. He's provoking you to get into your soul. Satan will never provoke you to get into the spirit. He'll only provoke you to get into the soul. Listen to me. God will use Satan to provoke you to get into the spirit. You have a choice there. Let David, let, let David, let Satan provoke you into the soul or let the Lord allow, he's going to allow Satan to provoke you to get into the spirit is your response. Last night we talked about uncircumcised, uncircumcised ears. Uncircumcised tongue. Uncircumcised heart. You're not going to be able to receive the things of the Lord if you're not circumcised. We'll get to that in a second. Now let me explain something to you. This is, you probably heard this before, right? Can everybody see this? Well, Jeremy, let's move this over. There you go. Am I on, Emilia? Okay, good. Thank you. These are the chapters in the Bible up until 1 Chronicles chapter 21. If you could add them up, they add up to 359. Chapters. Capitulos. Is that right? Orale. Okay, 50 chapters in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, so on and so forth. These are the chapters. First Chronicles 21. Adds up to 359. Amen? And, and, Satan is the first time, this is the first time did I ask you if you had your Torah hats on, correct? Do you, do you have your Torah hat on? You're the one that woke up with the feather, right? Right? Or was it you? Oh, you. Okay, good. Do you have your Torah hat on? Okay, good. That's how you spell Satan in Hebrew. Numerical value is what? Shin? No, not the normal people that have been here, the new people. 300. 300. Tet? Tav? I'm sorry, not Tav. Final noon. Fifty. Add 
Add that up. What does that add up to? Very good. How many days in a year? 365 would be what day? What day? December 31st, right? Correct? Good. I want you to count back and tell me what day the 359th day of the year is. You can use all your fingers. Come on, you use your fingers. What's the singer, the singer girl? Are you trying? Try, Jesus. She's not even trying. What is that, everybody? Okay, we don't have all the time. It's 359. 365. Subtract this from this. It comes down to what? December 25th. Right? 64 is the 30th. 63 is the 29th. 62 is the 28th. 61 is the 27th. 60 is the 26th. And the 359th day is the year is December 25th. December 25th. Do you think the Lord, if you were here last week, by the way, brother, what's his name? I answered the question last week on the t-shirt. I wore it again last week. Remember what it said? No, the week before you asked me what it was. Okay, I answered it last week. It was with a Genesis 17. So... Um, what was I going to say? Are there, and who was with me last week? Okay, good. What was the, the number of covenant in, December, in, uh, in Genesis 17? 13. 13. Is that a coincidence that 13, the, the, cov the word covenant is in this, uh, Genesis 17, 13 times. The Lord didn't speak to Abraham for 13 years. And the word love, numerical value is 13. None of that is a coincidence. Do you believe that? Do you believe in there's any coincidences in the Bible? Because he says in Ecclesiastes, okay, there's no new thing under the sun. Okay, there's no new thing under the sun. Why would the Lord use that and put his name there, Satan, on the 359th day, 359th chapter, 359, 359? Why? Could that be a sign? Remember about a month ago we talked about jots and tittles? Black fire, white fire. You got to go to the root. You got to go to the root. Everybody say the root. Not your hair. You don't have to go dye your hair. <laughs> and you can double check me on the accounting. Okay? I wish you would. Let's go to Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Why is the Lord setting us up for a fight? Aren't we the children of the woman? Yes. Why is the Lord picking a fight with the devil? With us. You're not even born yet. Are you born yet? No. He says, hey, there's going to be enmity between Eve and her seed, which is all of us, correct? 
Is that fair? Is that fair? It is if you allow the Lord to work through you. God will never give you anything more than you can bear. Ever. Ever. That doesn't seem fair, does it? But enmity. Have you ever get caught up in a prov provocative situation through friends? You know what? What's her name said about you? What? Well, you know, I don't know if you want to know. <laughs> Women are great at that stuff, right? <laughs> Stirring the pot. <laughs> you all have friends that stir the pot. Maybe you're the one that stirs the pot. Right? You just like to do that. Just stick your head in there. Well, that might be so, but you know what I heard. They're like, what did you hear? Right? Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1. How many of you memorized it yet in Hebrew? I gave you the hand now, didn't I? I told you guys to memorize it, at least the first two verses, right? How many of you memorized it? Other than the people that have been with me. Okay, with your heads down, pretending like you're not hearing me. Okay, <laughs> I'm assuming you didn't. All right, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you guys know that you're accountable for what I teach you? Not to me. To the Lord and the devil. Everything you learn here... Oh, I got your attention now? Not Pastor Mike. Don't worry about Pastor Mike. I got no consequence. What I teach you, the Lord and the devil says, they learned that. All right, go test them. That's your teaching. That's your testing, not me. Verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashemayim vehaharetz. And the earth was without form and void and darkness. Everybody say kosek. Okay, kosek is darkness. Was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light, right? Okay, we went over this in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23, a couple weeks ago, correct? Yes, no? Okay, good. Verse um, 4. God saw the light and that it was good. Correct? And God divided the light from the darkness. Okay? We went over this in Proverbs 6.23. Correct? Correct? Okay, good. And God called the light day, Yom. Okay? And the darkness he called night. Kosek he called Lelil. Everybody say Lelil. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Everybody say this. Be not ignorant of Satan's devices. How many of you say good night? Oh, provoke the hell out of her, please. You've been way here and way too long to know that. And God saw the light that it was good. And God, Badal, divided the light from the darkness. The darkness he called night. So that means darkness and night are one and the same, correct? Okay. So there is no... Okay, let me write this up here. Bada bing, do I have room? I'm going to erase this part. Can I erase this part? Okay, good. Erase this part, me, uh, Brother Jeremy. Put me on pause for a second, Amelia. He called what night? Darkness. Did the Lord say that darkness is good? No. As a matter of fact, on purpose, he separated the light from the darkness. Now, that word badal, okay, where it says he divided, that's also used as uh, uh, put a difference. Remember you heard that? 
put a difference, separate, divide. But doll, it's all used in the Bible. Put a difference between evil and good. Put a difference between holy and unholy. Clean and unclean. You've heard me say this, right? Yes. Divide it. Now, in the English, sometimes they'll say divide. I mean, uh, divide, uh, separate. What was the other word I just said? A difference. Okay? That's Strong's number uh, H9, uh, 914. Divided as 914. Okay? Uh, what did I say? Divided, right? Okay, that's an E. All right. Divided. Okay, how many of you know what uh, 12 is? 12. Huh? What? 12, what does 12 mean? Not Tov, 12. Good, Muzzle 12. Right? Good luck. Right? Okay, 12. Okay. Look at uh, Isaiah chapter um, 34, 14. Isaiah 34, 14. Isaiah 34, 14. Is everybody there? Let me know when you're there, yes? Is everybody there? Okay, good. Isaiah 34, 14. The wild beasts of the desert also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow, the screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place to rest. Now, screech owl. Screech, everybody say screech owl. Okay, that is Strong's number 3917. Oops. This is night, correct? Hey, Lil? Let me just add something to it. Okay. Oh, did I give you the strongest number? 3917. So you have night here. Okay, Lalil. Then they added the Yud and the Tav. Okay. And this is Lilith. Lilith. Okay, why they call it Screech Owl, I don't know. But I would like for somebody to look up Strong's number 3917. <coughs> Oops. And other than me, because you're probably here tired of hearing from me, what is the definition of that? Who said that? Here, come. A female night demon? Because there should be more. Uh, it says, noun feminine Lilith, name of a female night demon haunting desolate Edom, probably borrowed from Babylonian. Isaiah 34, 14. On the development of legends of Lilith in later Judaism, and it says, see books, and then the Talmud, under the word che, on the passage, I can't even pronounce that word. It doesn't say anything else. Perhaps only apparent, a popular, and then Lyle, la a night specter, screech owl. Oops. Okay, so let me add to that, right? Lilith, the name of a female goddess known as a night demon who haunts the desolate places of Edom, might be a nocturnal animal that inhabits desolate places. 
Let me tell you the first time I taught on Lilith. We were on Pomona. I don't know if anybody remembers. And there was a lady in the front row. And she had like a binder like you have, but eight and a half by eight. And anybody ever see Edward Scissorhands? She went like this to it. Funny thing is, after that was the very first, I said Lilith at the beginning of my class. Two hours later, tables are thrown, <laughs> chairs are thrown, vomit all over the place. She sits down at her desk, I mean at her seat, and I said, okay, can we begin class now? <laughs> Anyways, all this confetti's around her. She goes, who did this to my book? <laughs> you, you did. <laughs> Night dreams. Have you ever heard of uh, succubus or incubus? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Lilith also. Yeah. It's a female. Okay. Uh, it'll attack a man. It'll almost make him feel like he's having sex in the middle of the night. Where did I say? In the middle of the what? Night. Night. Okay. So from here on out, do not say good night. There is no good in night. If it would have said that, the Lord says, and he said, light is good. And he separated the light from the darkness. And the darkness he called what? Night. So there is no good in that. Yes, the Jews will say, you know, they little tov and all that other stuff. But look at your scripture. Does it say it's good? No. You know, what's, what's it? it's in Psalms, right? The freaks come out at night. <laughs> so I don't know, sister. I don't know if I should rebuke you or what's her name? I don't know if I should rebuke you or, or we're in the spirit. Hallelujah. Rebuke myself. Hallelujah. <laughs> going backwards. Do you see it? We're like going back in time. God is giving us a pattern. Satan provoked. He called a challenge. There's going to be a battle between you and the seed. Going back even to the beginning. Before the end of the first day or completed of the first day, he says, this is night. It's associated with darkness. There is no good in it. Your battle starts from the beginning. Remember I said that? Your battle starts from the beginning. If you have been getting provoked the last two weeks, welcome to the party, pals. Isn't that from Death Die Hard? When he throws the thing, welcome to the party, pals. I've told you guys this. Your congregation will come against you. Your wife will come against you. And if you're married, your girlfriend, I'm just kidding. Okay? <laughs> your husband will come against you. Okay, your children will come against you. Your finances will come against you. And the Lord's saying, and you're going to look up and you say, and he's going to say, my good and faithful servant. I hope. Right? You're going to be tempted. God, take this away from me. If, if people are going to come to me and say, Pastor Mike, pray this off me. And I'm going, no. And you'll say, oh, he's mean. I'm going to go to Pastor Priscilla. He's mean. I'm going to go to Pastor M uh, Malavis, Emilio, blah, 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 blah. And they'll go through all the things. No, that's your testing. That's how you grow. If you don't have any open doors, that's how you grow. That's how you take authority over the enemy. As long as you don't quit, you'll be fine. Just don't quit. Everybody say this. Winners never quit. And quitters never win. It's going to be tough. But go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13, I believe. I think that's it. 
First Corinthians chapter six. Yeah, thirteen. First Corinthians chapter six, verse thirteen. Emilio, put me on pause for a second. Yes? You guys still looking? Where's my top at? Everybody there? By the way, Lilith, it's only in that verse. Okay. First Corinthians chapter six, verse thirteen. Everybody with me? Meats for the belly and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. He wants your body to be healthy. Yeah? Because it encompasses what? The Holy Spirit. Okay? Your body is supposed to protect the Holy Spirit. It's, it's, it's the, the flesh that allows the Holy Spirit to work through you. Say to work through you. Okay? <clears throat> so while you are being provoked, whether through rashes or psoriasis or your finances, or you're going to get them all, yeah? I hope you do. Not to be mean, but I'll know because if you do, you're growing. You're growing. Okay? Like I told somebody the other day, but Pastor Mike, it hurts. I said, that's good. You know you're alive. Pain is good. You know you're alive. You've seen the people that, uh, no, stay with me, stay with me. Don't go to sleep. Stay with me. You know, when they get shot or something like that, right? Yes. Pain is good. You know you're alive. Your faces are, he's nuts. Look at it. But learn this, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The quicker you learn how to die to the flesh, the more you could take this to the battle in the spirit. Remember, Satan is a spirit. Okay? You can only have authority over him in the spirit. Does everybody understand that? So you take care of your body to protect your spirit man. Okay? The Shema. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 9 right hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord and you shall love with all your heart and soul strength and mind and these words I command you this day shall teach them to your children uh, uh, put them in your heart whatever I think I said that part did I say that part teach them to your children diligently as they sit down as they walk along the way as they lie down as they rise it up you should bind it as a sign to their hands put it as front that's between their eyes right on the doorposts and upon their gates right Okay, this shouldn't be new to you, right? I gave you most of you guys mezuzahs to put in your car. Do you have them? You should be saying this every time you start your car up. How many people are doing that? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the old class? Were you in the old class? Ah, oh. okay, good. Ask the people in the new class if they're not using it, give it to you. Provoke them. <laughs> Come on, you ain't using it anyways. You're probably going to go to hell anyways. Come on, give it to me. Give me a chance. All right, don't put that on the tape. <laughs> hot mic, hot mic. Okay. Um, where was I? God would have never put us in that position telling the enemy, yeah, her seed is going to come get, be, get you. You're going to hurt your, your, your head on his heel. You ever seen that before? Somebody gets hit in the face. They've, they got a bloody nose. Well, that doesn't look good. Yeah, but I hurt his knuckles. <laughs> That's basically what it's telling Satan. It hurt your head on, on his seat, on his heel. That means we have authority over him. All the Lord needs for you to do is get in the spirit. Live in the spirit. Walk as he walked. It's not about salvation anymore. I'm assuming you're all saved. It's about gaining authority and walking and taking over the atmosphere. Amen. 
Are you prepared to do that? Jesus. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Did you guys, I promised the class last week I was going to have um, bagels. Did you guys get bagels? Oh, thank you, Pastor Mike. Okay, good, good. Thank you, Pastor Mike. That was only for the people that were here last week. Did other people get them? No, <laughs> no, no I'm, a, I'm a nice guy. We decided last night, I think it was last night, right, that when uh, the Lord prayed over the it was he was praying over locks and bagels. Oh, that was in the verse that's in the NIV version. <laughs> that's in the footnote. <laughs> All right, Jeremy, take up the offering. While he's doing that, I want to say something. And I'll continue to say this. Has that, have you, any of you ever heard of the Lord's Prayer? Have you ever heard of the, the Lord, Lord God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords? Every tongue will confess and every knee will bow. Yes? Okay, good. Adonai, the Lord, blah, 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 blah. Then how come mainstream Christianity doesn't honor the Lord's festivals? Anybody? Why don't they honor the Lord's festivals, but they do keep the 359th day of the year. Meditate on that. Well, I'm upset with you because of you say, I want to tell the truth. I know you're too long to be that. All right, so after tonight, no more good what? Yeah, well, don't, you're not supposed to say it. <laughs> Huh? Hasta la taco. See you later, alligator. <laughs> bye bye. Adios. No, seriously. Shalom. Okay. Okay, you're walking away. Shalom. Shalom, brother. Shalom, sister. Shalom. Okay, that's the universal. Is, is that somebody trying to get in that door? Oh. Okay, shalom. Everybody say shalom. Somebody open the, try to open the door. I think I'm hearing something. Shalom. All right? Shalom.